Hey everybody, it's Dr. May. I'm here again for some more expanded edition DBT skills. So this one is um, validation. And I know I've talked about validation before um, in regular DBT as well as radically open DBT skills, but this one is a fun new acronym. So I really think you're gonna like it. And I think it's also um, presented in a simple way that we all can use. And um, so that, there you go. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So um, I guess just another one of the things I wanna say is that um, validation is a really useful skill that everyone can use and that we could use it across a lot of situations. So we could really get a lot of mileage out of doing validation. So um, learning it in a new way and uh, kind of clarifying it in our mind is always a helpful thing. Okay, so let's do it. So um, validate, by the way, is the acronym. So that's why I have it um, bolted over here. So each letter of the word validate is gonna help us be more validating. So here we go. So what is validation? We might as well start with the definition. So validation is a skill where we're putting ourselves in another person's shoes and trying to understand the world from their perspective. So understanding is a really good um, synonym for validation. So I'm trying to step inside that person, imagine what are they thinking? What are they feeling? What might their motivation have been for a particular behavior? How does it make sense to them? Um, and to show them that understanding also and putting it into words and talking to them about it. So that can be a way for us to connect over something and feeling understood feels good for everybody. So when we show understanding, um, it can really help our relationships. So it's a very important skill. It's also why it's the V in the give skill, which is about keeping good relationships. So we could also validate somebody even if we don't agree with their behavior. So we could say, listen, I don't like the fact that you punched this guy, but I could understand how angry you were and how you felt like doing. I, I understand that made sense in your mind why you were so angry about it. I don't agree with the action, but I could understand the motive. So we could disagree, but also validate at the same time. So let's get started with the acronym. So V for valuing others. So this is like a, just a very um, deep and basic thing to keep in mind. So just seeing someone as a human being that inherently has value is a very basic level of validation. You have value just because you're living, just because you're a human. Um, and beyond that, I could also start to think of things like, what's something that's likable about this person? Even if there's a lot of things I, I may not agree with or may not like, can I find something to hook onto that I find that I could I could like? Like maybe this person has something sweet about them or maybe they're admirable in something that they're able to do. Maybe they have a certain skill that I could admire or maybe I could appreciate that they've been through a lot in their life and they survived a lot. And um, maybe they're courageous in a certain kind of a way. Maybe I could see how they're kind to others in a certain way. Even if there's a lot of other things maybe I don't like. So what's something that I could dig deep and find to value? Because some people it's very easy to value them and see, appreciate them. Other times it's harder. So if it's harder, this might take a little more effort, but if it's easier, you'll naturally feel it. And in valuing them, it helps to bring us a sense of accepting them as they are. So again, we may not agree with everything about them. We may not love everything about them, but I could accept that this is who this person is in this moment in time, given their history, given their context. And, you know, I could appreciate them as a human being. And showing value could also be involving showing some care and concern toward the person in kind of a subtle way and um, letting them know through your actions that they're important to you or that they do have value. So this is uh, the base for a lot of other things. So A, ask questions. So as we're conversating with somebody, we kind of want to draw them out a little bit more, show that we're interested in who they are and that we're valuing them by wanting to know more. Now, this doesn't mean in asking intrusive questions or overly personal questions or things that aren't appropriate to the relationship, but just in a gentle way, kind of getting them to elaborate to show that you're interested in finding out what are they thinking, feeling? How do they see the world? Why do they act the way they do? So it was curiosity 
ask some more questions just to get to know them. And that shows that you care and that you're valuing them. So L, listen and reflect. So you're asking them questions, you're talking to them. It's important to show then that you're listening. So using your body language, your proper eye contact, putting your phone down, doing one thing at a time and giving them your attention is inherently validating because it's showing that you're worthy of being listened to. So I respect you as a human being and know that you're worthy of having my attention. So I'm gonna listen to what they try to say, try to take it in without too much reaction, just kind of listen to it and then just reflect back what they're saying. So reflection is a very basic skill that shows you're listening. So on one level, you could literally take a couple of their words and say it back to them. So if someone's saying something like, oh, I had a really horrible day at work yesterday. One of the first things you might say is, wow, you had a really horrible day, huh? So you're taking their words and just reflecting it back. And it shows them that I heard what you just said. Or sometimes a person might say a whole lot, maybe they're talking for a couple of minutes, explaining a situation, and you might reflect back a basic theme in what they just said. So let's say you have a friend who's talking about feeling really disrespected by his boss and how upsetting that was. And my boss said this, my boss did that. And you might just reflect back and say, wow, you know, I can see how upset you are that your boss is being disrespectful. So it's kind of like a summary statement that reflects back that I heard what you said and I'm just putting it out there for you to show you that I'm with you. And if I'm wrong, you know, I can kind of invite the person to confirm my understanding. Did I get that right? Um, you had a horrible day, huh? And they might say, no, 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 it wasn't horrible. It was really this. Oh, okay. All right. So, you know, be humble that you may not have gotten it perfectly. So, you know, you put it out there with a question mark and the person could confirm what you said or say, no, no, no it wasn't quite right. All right. So I identify with others. So it's a kind of a cool picture. I found this on Google. So it's literally like putting yourself in someone else's shoes, like we said earlier. So if I really sat back and imagined my life from the stance of the other person, so think about how they might have grown up, what kind of learning they've had, what are the current situations like, what are all the factors involved with their life, and if I was really in that situation, how would I feel? Would I feel just the way they're feeling? Could I understand truly how it, it makes sense for them when I really put myself in that situation? And if I do, I could try to communicate that back to the person in a deeper way, showing that I understand their history, their context, their relationships, the things that they know or they don't know, the level of education they have, the kind of job they have, the social economic status they have, their racial status, like all those things might help me better understand the person. So if I really understood that, put myself in their shoes, can I communicate how I get it? And I may not have reacted the same way as them. Maybe still I would have responded differently, but that's okay. I could still respect that we're still different people, but I could also try to show, yeah, I, I know that this makes sense for you. D. Discuss emotions. So this could happen a few different ways. <clears throat> the person might spontaneously share how they're feeling in a certain situation. Other times you could maybe ask them how they're feeling. And that shows that you're interested in better understanding the experience. Um, you might take a guess about what they're feeling. Like based on all the things you said, I can understand how frustrated you are. Or I can understand why you're really anxious about this situation. Yeah. So you could take a guess and they can tell you you're right or wrong and kind of put the emotions out there and show them that you get why their feelings make sense. Um, another time, uh, another thing actually you could try to do is if they're sharing an emotional experience. So the person might explain how they're suffering from panic attacks and how overwhelming it is to feel the anxiety and feel their heart pounding out of their chest and being scared that they're having a heart attack and having this happen in front of other people and not knowing what to do. And you could validate how scary that must be or how difficult it is to experience that intense emotion. Some people struggle, let's say, from depression on an ongoing basis. And it really interferes with their life and it's very painful. And you could validate what that must be like for that person. So that's another level of discussing emotions. See how complex can be? Yeah. 
Um, okay, A, so this is an important one as well, attending to nonverbals. So some of the things that we communicate are verbal and what we say. So a lot of times what we just talked about is a base a response based on what person is saying. Now we're also tuning into what kind of nonverbal language are they giving as they're talking to us. So the, sometimes the nonverbals match what they're saying verbally and other times it doesn't. So sometimes we can try to show understanding by putting words to the nonverbal language, body language that we're seeing in the other person. So let's say we, um, we're looking at one of the people on the bottom of the slide. So we can kind of surmise what they might be feeling based on those nonverbals. And that could open up the discussion more. So maybe somebody is feeling hurt or maybe they're feeling sad or anxious or um, disconnected, uh, depressed. And we could kind of help them to articulate that and show like I'm paying attention to you. I'm trying to see and understand what you're showing me. And I build a bridge that way. Um, and again, I could check to make sure if I'm getting it right or not. I might be misreading someone's signals or I might be reading it correctly, but they could let me know and I could check with them. Okay, so T, turn the mind. Now in DBT, oftentimes we're using the turning the mind skill to turn from willfulness or you know, not wanting to do something, feeling stubborn, feeling stuck, um, to willingness, which is wanting to do a skill, being open-minded, giving something a try, taking a risk. But here we're using it a different way. We're turning the mind from, let's say, judging the person to validating the person. So let's all admit, sometimes when we really don't like somebody, or we're really judging what they're doing, because we do not agree with it, we think it's wrong, we're moralizing them, um, we're, we're very frustrated with them, and it's much easier to judge them. Sometimes it's even more fun to judge them and just be like, oh, this guy's such an idiot. So it takes a lot to turn our mind back to validation. So in the short run, judging could feel good. It could be the easier option. But in the long run, to keep a better relationship or resolve a conflict, it's more to our benefit and the relationship's benefit to turn our mind back to validation and have the willingness to validate, even if we don't want to or even if it's hard. So this is an important thing. So we could know the VALIDE acronym and all that stuff, but if we're not willing to use it, it's not gonna help. So it's easy to do the VALIDE when the relationship's going well, or we like the person, or it's not that difficult to do, but sometimes we people push our buttons and it's not easy to do that, or we don't wanna do that. So we have to be willing to turn our mind back to validation. So. The next one is kind of related to that as well. So sometimes it's easy to be like, oh, screw it. I'm just walking away from this person. I'm ghosting this person. I just don't want to deal with them anymore. Uh, I just want to disconnect and forget about this whole thing and not talk it through and let it blow over and come back later. So it's hard to stay engaged when a relationship is more challenging or, or when there's a conflict or when we're feeling really uncomfortable. So this one's like saying, okay, don't disconnect or, get her, or take a break and then try to come back, work it through, participate in the working through, and while you're doing that, validate the person. So it could be hard, but in the long run, validating, accepting, repairing mistakes, maybe you made a mistake, they made a mistake, trying to work it through, coming to a, a mutual apology or agreement could be better for both parties in the long run. So try to stay with it instead of just running away from it. So the valide is how to do it. And the TE is how to stay with it and actually do it when it's difficult. So these are the harder levels of validation that sometimes we really don't wanna do. All right, so just putting it all together. So how to validate people, we're gonna value others showing that on a deep human level, we appreciate them as human beings going to ask questions to try to draw out their experience and better understand, going to show that we're listening with our body language and by reflecting back what they're saying, identifying with others by really putting ourselves in their shoes, deeply understanding their situation from their standpoint on a variety of levels, discussing emotions, trying to show them how their emotions make sense and um, how it might be difficult to experience certain emotions, 
attending to nonverbals. So it's not just what they say, it's how they're presenting that we might be able to share with them as a way of connecting. And then if it's challenging to do those things in certain circumstances, we're gonna turn our mind back to validation so we're not judging and encourage participation so we don't disconnect. So that summarizes this one, right? Pretty good, pretty nice acronym. So go Lane Peterson, that was very nice. Um, so that, that's found in the book, uh, The Expanded Dialectical Behavior Therapy Skills Training Manual. So uh, you could find more about it there. Also, there's two other validation related videos on my channel that you could check out for a little extra information. So one is uh, that I did a while ago from the regular DBT curriculum as part of the middle path module. And the other one's part of the radically open DBT curriculum, which has a little bit of a different angle as well. So you could check that out if you're interested. So there you go. That's a new way to validate. You got the new, new uh, acronym. You're all set to go. So I uh, hope you practice it, try it out, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody.